All right, so in this video, we're going to dive into the API layer. I'm going to show you all how to handle get requests as well as post requests. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. So just to remind you that Next.js comes with a built-in API layer. So if you wanted to create some kind of small API section of your application to handle some server-side tasks, uh, you can do that. Let's say if you want to abstract it away from the get static props or get server side props uh, functions that you can expose inside your pages file and you want to put it in a separate part of your application you can do that so when you generate your next chase app there is this pages folder and inside the pages folder there is the api subfolder in case if you deleted this by accident or maybe you delete on purpose uh, you can actually just recreate that folder call it api and as long as you have this folder every single typescript file inside this api folder will map to a proper route okay so for example this hello.ts file is inside the api subfolder let me zoom in just a little bit more okay so if i were to go to this api route i would have to visit slash api slash hello and then it would just return john doe so let me go ahead and open a postman and show you how that works. So if I type in HTTP localhost, so it's on the same port. So our next app in dev mode runs on port 3000. So the API layer just runs on the same port, but it just has the API route that is suffixed after the, uh, the domain. So let's go to the hello endpoint and you're going to see that it gives us back John Doe. Okay. Let's create some basic routes. So let's create another folder inside here so similar to pages you can actually create subfolders as well inside the api folder so for example i'm going to go ahead and create a folder called i'll call it users okay now you can predict that if i were to create an index.ts file and if i were to create a handler this would handle the slash api slash users endpoint so let's create an endpoint so we're going to go ahead and export a default function. So export default async function, and we'll call it whatever we want. It doesn't really matter because this is a default export. Okay. So it's going to take in two parameters and these two parameters are the first one is the uh, next API request object. And the second one is next API response type. Okay. And this is only important if you're using uh, TypeScript, if you want to get the type annotations. Okay, so similar, if you've used Express.js before or Fastify, you're going to have these two request and response objects. It's very similar. And Next.js also has middleware that you can use as well. So a lot of the middleware that you've used in Express applications, you can actually use them in, in Next.js applications, such as cores, for example. Uh, out of the box, Next does have some middleware that is already configured. For example, they take care of parsing cookies, uh, the query string, and the request body okay so if we wanted to get the route parameter we can reference request.query if we wanted to get the request body for post requests or put requests we can reference request.body and if we wanted the cookies we could just do rec.cookies or request.cookies okay let's just go ahead and return a 200 for this endpoint so this endpoint is going to be slash API slash users. Okay. So remember we're inside the API subfolder. Okay. And inside this API subfolder, it's inside pages. We have a user subfolder. Okay. So that this is how we create nested routes. Okay. So all we do is we just create either a file called users.ts inside API, or we can just create a subfolder called users and then create an index.ts file. So let's go to slash API slash users, and you're going to see that we get a 200. Okay, perfect. Okay, we can also handle dynamic routes as well. So similar to uh, just having pages in Next.js, with the API layer, we could do the same exact thing. So to have dynamic routes, dynamic API routes. So let's say, for example, I want to have an endpoint set up for the user, um, and they have to pass in their user id as the route parameter so we can go ahead and create a new file i'm going to go ahead and call it id but wrap it in between square brackets okay so this indicates that this is a dynamic 
route and ID is actually going to be the route parameter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this code that I wrote earlier. And I just want to show you how this is going to work. So let me go ahead and console log rec.query to show you the value of ID. Okay, so let's go into Postman and let's go ahead and add a path or not add a path. We're going to go ahead and add a route parameter. So one, two, three. So this is going to represent the ID, okay, which is the route parameter, okay? So if I go into my apps console, if you look over here, you can see down below we have ID and the value of it is one, two, three, or it's the value of whatever I pass in in the path. Okay, so again, if you've used Express before or Nest.js or similar uh, frameworks like even Fastify, for example, okay, uh, this is pretty much similar to what it's what's happening right now. You can use route parameters to create dynamic routes. So, for example, let's say if we want to get the uh, the piece of information for this particular user with the ID of one two three four, we could go ahead and create a new file, okay, wrap it wrap the name or the route parameter between square brackets and then call it a day. Okay, we can also create nested. Uh, we can also create like a nested structure too. So let me show you. Let me right click users and I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called square bracket ID. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this file, this ID.ts file, move it inside that folder. Okay, so you can create very, very complex routes. So let's say, for example, uh, users might have some kind of you know, one-to-many relationship with uh, blog posts, for example. So we might not want to get every single blog post from the database for all users. We want to get all blog posts for a single user. So the way that API endpoint would look like from a design perspective would look like, would look something like slash users slash, and then the user ID, and then you would add the blogs path. Okay, and then that would give all of the users blogs. So that's just an example of how you could design your API routes. You don't have to do it exactly like this. Okay, but this is a common approach that many people do. Okay, you have the main resource that you're trying to get. You pass in the ID of that resource. So if it's a user, you pass in the user's ID. And an individual user can have a lot of blog posts. So you add that at the end. And this indicates that this user is you're, you're fetching all of the users blogs blog posts so let's go inside the id subfolder okay so this is now a dynamic this is still a dynamic route so if i were to go to slash one two three four it would still give me the same response but let's go ahead and create another route i'll call this uh blogs.ts okay so this is going to this endpoint should give us all of the users blogs okay so i'm just going to go ahead and send blogs as a response just a plain string and watch this so if i add slash blogs at the end you're going to see that we can visit this specific route see how that works so this is a quick example of how you can create complicated route structures okay so right now all of the endpoints that we are calling we're calling with a get request but even if we call it with a post request or a pull request it's going to give us the same exact response now our business logic is obviously the same. We're not doing anything, okay? But we need a way to actually distinguish whether or not uh, the request that's coming into the server is a get request, a post request, pull request, or whatever, okay? Now, in Express, you have a way to reference the app instance, right? The Express app instance, and then you can register a specific endpoint by calling .get, .post, or whatever uh, request method that you need. So if you want to register a post request, you would call app.post. Well, Next.js doesn't have that at all. So if you want to check to see what type of request is coming in, you'll have to get that information from the request object. And that property is called method. And basically that just tells you what type of request is coming in. So let's just say, for example, I want to go ahead and create a new user. So let me go back into this index.ts file that's inside the users folder but outside the id folder so literally right over right over here right over here okay i know it looks a little really confusing because they, they all look the same but don't worry huh it's just this this file that's right inside the users 
folder. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if request.method is equal to get. And if it is, we'll just send back users. And we'll check to see if the method is a post request. And if it is, we'll do something else. Now, keep in mind that there are lots of different uh, HTTP verbs. So there's, for, for example, there's get, post, put, patch, delete, and so many more. So just make sure you write the logic to handle the ones that you actually want to handle. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and do a status of 201. Okay, and don't worry, in the next episode, I'll, we'll actually connect to a database so we can actually uh, create uh, resources on our server that will actually interact with our database. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this slash users endpoint. Okay, so right now, we're going to make a get request. You're going to see it's going to send back a 200 okay, and it sends back the string users. Now, if I make a post request, watch what happens. It's going to go ahead and give us a status code of 201, which indicates that a resource has been created, and then we get back post. Okay, obviously, this isn't anything meaningful, but like I said, we'll connect to a database later and then create uh, some, well, we'll make some post requests and pass in a request body. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. So just want to do a quick video covering the API layer that's built in with Next.js. So this is really useful if you have a very small application that doesn't really need too much data, doesn't really need too much uh, server side handling. Okay, so it's really good for small applications. Though, just a disclaimer, if you have a very large application, it's better to move your API separate from the actual Next.js application. So that means using either a different framework like Express, Nest.js, Spring Boot, Django, whatever it is that you want to use. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode where we're going to go ahead and connect to the database. Peace out.